So the brush system is spread out. We know that. It's brushes, alphas, it's the picker palette, it's the stroke palette, it's the texture palette. But let's get in and really start to uh, understand a bit more about each one of those and, and what part they kind of play in the, uh, in the whole equation. So inside of the brush palette, we're going to have basically the types and we're going to have the modifiers. Now because it's the brush palette, you're focused on everything. Everything in that brush palette is relative to us. Let's take a look at the draw palette. And the draw palette has a bunch of stuff down here. It's not relative, not relevant. This is kind of relevant, but not really. This upper part of the brush palette, or the draw palette, you'll actually see that in the shelf. So by default, those are pulled out to the shelf. The alpha palette, you know, it's got some things like create, make, transfer. But what we're going to be focused on is modify. You can blur an alpha, you can add noise to it, and then this guy is going to become important, mid value. And now, picker palette, we've already kind of talked about this. Orientation and depth. Once and continuous. And stroke. We have modifiers. Well, let's say it this way. We have types. And we have modifiers. But there are these confusing things. Is lazy mouse a modifier? Is curve a modifier? And then they have this thing called, that's inside lazy mouse, it's called backtrack. So aren't they types of strokes? I don't know. And, uh, and there's no clear terminology for it. So we just have to remember that part of the modification system is this kind of subsystem for lazy mouse, subsystem for curves, and a subsystem for backtrack. <clears throat> backtrack was that. There goes the voice. Okay, and then in the texture, texture palette, it's real straightforward. Is there a texture or is there not? If there's not, you know, it's irrelevant. But the relevant part is, is RGB on? If it's on, the textures work. If it's off, the textures do not work. Okay, the other thing that's kind of important to keep in mind is that the brush has to be visible up here for for you to be modifying its setting. So I mentioned that because right now you can see I have the standard brush active, right? But what if I want to adjust the smooth brush? You ha you can adjust the smooth brush. Like let's say for example right now I press shift and the smooth brush is just using its default settings. What if that's too strong, right? Because, you know, I'm, I'm holding shift down and you see Z intensity is set at 100. Focal shift is negative 55. And what if I want to change that? Well, now that I release shift, you can see this goes up to 56. It goes to whatever the standard brush was. I can press and hold shift. It's active. I lower my Z intensity. And there we go. Now the effect is a lot less dramatic. 
Same thing holds for control shift. If you're doing any adjustments to these brushes in control shift, and if I remember right, there are clip brush modifiers. You just want to have control shift clicked when you're adjusting uh, when you're adjusting that. The other thing I need to mention is that there are a bunch of brushes. I mean, a bunch, lots. Like for example, let's just hover over and. I mean, what is this? This is 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, it's 16 times a lot. <laughs> There's a lot of brushes there. Um, but come into light box, come into brush, and look at all of these guys. That's a lot. Uh, and then let's just go into miscellaneous. You know, there's four brushes in there. Let's take a look at scales. That's kind of cool. There's a bunch of brushes there. But what I do when I get a new version of ZBrush is I go through the brushes and see what's changed and just start to experiment with things. That's made a big difference. Uh, but anyways, there's a bunch of brushes there, so you got to kind of keep that in mind. So much that you know you have to be really organized.